Harbor Place wishes everyone a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. It would be great to receive the greatest gift of all, unconditional love. Pets provide a comfort system for seniors. Pets not only enhance seniors' lives, but they also improve their health, reduce blood pressure, stress levels, fight depression, and help protect against heart conditions. Today, our special guest is Courtney Zanetti, Director of Community Outreach with the Humane Society of the Treasure Coast. Good morning, Courtney. Please tell us more about you and your position with the Treasure Coast Humane Society. Good morning, Diana. So my position at the Humane Society is to oversee our volunteer department, our humane education, and our community events. Primarily, I focus on fundraising opportunities and events for the Humane Society of the Treasure Coast that comes with our annual signature events like the Mutt March or the Pooch Plunge, which some people may be familiar with. That took place a week ago at Sailfish Splash Water Park in Stewart, and we raised more than $6,000, and the dogs basically went swimming, and it was all for the Humane Society of the Treasure Coast to fundraise. Um, I also plan our annual gala, and that takes place every February, and it's the, it's the Paws and Claws Gala. This year, its theme is Paws to Celebrate, since we have so much to be grateful for, and it will take place on February 11th at Willoughby Golf Club in Stewart. Fantastic. That sounds like fun. We'll mention those uh, dates again later in the show. How long has the Treasure Coast Humane Society been in our community as advocates for the homeless, abused, and abandoned animals? The Humane Society of the Treasure Coast was founded in 1955. We s were organized by a group of volunteers in Stewart, uh, right next to, at the time, what was the county dump. And since then, we have grown into a much larger organization that employs approximately 50 employees. We have, at any given point, um, I would say currently we have about 400 active volunteers. Um, our mission is to sh assure a better life for companion animals by providing shelter, finding loving homes, and promoting respect for their place in our lives. We are very proud of our mission and what we're able to achieve on an annual basis, on a daily basis, really. And um, it's with, with grateful hearts that mm -hmm. we serve this, this community. Great. What, is the, what exactly is the area you serve? So we are technically the only open access nonprofit shelter serving from Vero Beach to Key Largo. However, because there are so many other shelters and rescue groups within the area, our primary uh, area that we serve is, I would say, St. Lucie and Martin County. And we are based in Palm City. We have two thrift stores, one in Central Stewart near Pet Supermarket and one in Northern Stewart over the Roosevelt Bridge. And both of those thrift stores, we also um, have adoptable cats. What's the location of your the main office? Our address um, for the Humane Society Shelter is 4100 Southwest Layton Farm Avenue. And that is just off of Martin Highway in Palm City. Okay. And contact information and website? Our website is www.hstc1.org. And that stands for Humane Society Treasure Coast, the number one dot org. And our phone number is 772-223-8822. So my understanding, um, the Treasure Coast Humane Society, um, to assure a better life for companion animals. What exactly are companion animals? What type of animals do you assist? So companion animals are domestic pets. We adopt out dogs, cats, critters, and critters constitute rabbits, guinea pigs, mice, hamsters, sometimes rats. We've had chinchillas. We've had, oddly enough, potbelly pigs. Out in Palm City, you'd be surprised what kind of animals come through our doors. Um, we don't accept reptiles. We actually don't specialize in them, so we will refer them to maybe um, a local pet store or somewhere else. But We've even provided care for, um, we actually have a, a miniature horse as one of our pet therapy companions. So we're a wide ranging service <laughs> facility, <laughs> but primarily we focus on domestic animals, adopting them out. 
Oh, fantastic. As we talked about your services, let's just go through some of the services for our, our listeners. A low-cost public spay-neuter program. Correct. So one of the services that we are incredibly proud of is our spay and neuter program. Basically, our main mission is to keep animals in their home and to help reduce overpopulation. And one of the ways that we can counteract overpopulation is by offering low-cost public spay and neuter to the public. Um, so what people can do is they can bring their animal to our facility and we will schedule them for surgery. It's $100 for a dog to get spayed or neutered. It's $50 for a cat and it's $40 for rabbits. And part of the, that cost covers, of course, the, the veterinarian um, care for the animal during the procedure. But we also, in addition to spay neuter, we provide microchipping. And microchipping is essential to making sure that if an animal gets displaced, they're appropriately and hopefully quickly returned to their owner. Great. Um, adoption services. So we typically adopt, we're actually celebrating our fourth record year um, in a row for adoption rates. This past year alone, we have adopted out more than 2,900 animals. And a lot of that is because we're very, we have very aggressive adoption programs and specials and policies in place. Currently, dogs, I should say typically, Dogs are adopted out for $125. Cats are adopted out for $45. Rabbits are $25. And that all includes spay, neuter, microchipping, first round of vaccinations, and um, whatever, whatever essentials are needed for the animal as soon as they enter the home. We have very aggressive specials though and right now through the month of December we have $25 adoptions for all animals um, less critters I should say because they're typically less than $25 anyway but typically dogs are $125 so right now you are saving $100 if you adopt a, a dog at the Humane Society of the Treasure Coast through the month of December. Fantastic. Return of lost pets to families. So we actually have a contract with the county and animal control brings all of the pets that they find wandering the streets or, you know, lost and, and um, just meandering around. They bring them to our shelter and we have a five day holding policy at the Humane Society of the Treasure Coast, which means that if an animal comes through our doors, we have to hold it for five days for the owner to properly come and claim that animal. If the animal is not claimed within five days, we then put it through spay neuter surgery if that's needed. And then once it recovers from surgery, we put the animal on the adoption floor. However, with that said, we are very proud of the fact that we have a 20% return to owner rate at the Humane Society of the Treasure Coast. That's actually above national averages with reuniting a pet with its owner. We are very diligent when an animal comes through our doors to not just house it for five days and provide it shelter and care, but we actually search far and wide for the owners. The first thing that we do when an animal comes through our doors is we scan it. We look for a microchip. If there is a microchip, we diligently try to contact the owners in a, in a very timely manner to let them know that their animal is safe that their animal is being cared for, and that they have a certain amount of time to come and claim their animal before we put it up for adoption. In the event that there is no microchip, our adoption staff immediately turns to social media, believe it or not. They turn to the lost and found pages on Facebook. They turn to Craigslist, and they look for any postings that might fit the criteria of the pet that just came in. And you'd be surprised, but we actually are able to reunite a large number of our animals, especially cats, <laughs> with their owners based on what our adoption staff finds through social media. And that's a really beautiful position to be in um, and that we love to, our goal is to keep the animals in their homes. And if we can help facilitate that, it's something we're very proud of. Humane education. 
So at the Humane Society of the Treasure Coast, we have a humane education department, which, which is entirely devoted to raising awareness and about companion animals and helping um, educate the public on how to properly care for them and, and, and love them. Another part of humane education is, is pet therapy. And with pet therapy, we actually bring um, certified therapy pets into assisted living facilities or into the schools where they can actually provide a service for the public. There's something that we should actually clarify while, while I have the opportunity to do so. There is a distinct difference between service pets and therapy pets. Service pets are designed to provide a service for their caretaker, whether that's someone suffering from PTSD or diabetes or seizures, they provide a direct service for their caretaker to allow them to get the proper medical care that they need in the event something is coming on. Our therapy pets at the Humane Society of the Treasure Coast do the very opposite. Although they provide loving companionship for their caretakers, they actually provide um, companionship and peace and comfort to those in need. Um, for example, we bring, we have a, a program with our humane education department that's called Lessons in Kindness, and, and there's also Pause to Read. And with Pause to Read, what we actually do is we can partner a child that might not be on the same reading level as some of his classmates with a, a, a therapy pet and over the course of the year this child reads one-on-one -on -one to this dog in a small room where he or she soon begins to come out of their shell they're able to read better and their comprehension reading comprehension is increased and they're by the end of the school year hopefully capable of reading in front of their entire class without fear of judgment, criticism, and they're confident in their reading abilities, and that's largely in part due to our Pause to Read program. So with Humane Education, we partner with several facilities throughout the county, and I'll touch upon some just to give you a point of reference. We currently are in 17 assisted living facilities, one hospital, one drug and alcohol facility, five boys and girls clubs, two libraries, and two schools. Our humane education department is comprised of 87 volunteers and 91 therapy pets. And this year alone, we've logged over 4,000 hours with our volunteers in this program. So it's a huge part of what we do, and it helps at the end of the day, it helps us to achieve our mission. Then you have disaster preparedness. So with disaster preparedness, we are actually the housing facility for first responders, companion pets, and um, really all pets for the, for the area that's in an emergency evacuation zone. There are things that owners need to do prior to bringing their pet to our shelter during an emergency. We ask that they get pre-registered. We ask that they're current on their vaccinations. We ask that if an, if an owner has to bring their pet to our facility during a storm, that they bring the necessities that need to go with that pet, such as a crate, such as food, such as any toys, maybe one if, if, if the animal needs some sort of comfort. Um, and medication is essential. So we are a housing facility during an emergency, and that's important that people understand it's for the pets, not for the people. So in the event of a storm such as we experienced most recently, we ask that people bring their pets to us but prepare to be separated and they have to go elsewhere. We don't house humans. During the last hur Hurricane Matthew, the last yes. one we had, how many pets did you have? We had more than 400 pets really? that came through our doors, in okay. addition to all the animals we house for adoption. Well, typically, on a, on a typical day, how many animals do you house down there? It varies. Um, we are a revolving door in that animals are coming through daily, but also being adopted out daily. Um, we have 36 adoption kennels for dogs 
but that doesn't count all the animals, all the dogs behind the adoption doors that are being currently um, fixed for spay neuter or getting making sure that they are uh, it, they withstand their five day holding policy. We also have at any given point, I would say right now we have about 300 cats up for adoption at the Humane Society of the Treasure Coast. Although some are housed at the facility in Palm City, we also have two thrift stores that house them there as well. In addition to our foster network, which cares for all of the animals that aren't quite ready for adoption, but are will be relatively soon. What's the size of your staff? We have about 50 employees at any given point, just shy of 50 employees. And we have, I would say, roughly 400 active volunteers. Fantastic. Courtney, take us through the steps if I wanted to adopt a pet. Um, where do I go? Who do I contact? And is there an application that I need to fill out? So yes, there, there is an application process that needs to be completed in order to adopt a pet. The first thing that I would recommend an, a potential adopter does is perhaps visit our website. Our website, again, is www.hstc1.org. And what you would want to do at that point in time is to maybe go through our pet search tabs. Familiarize yourself with what kind of animal you're looking for. Is it a dog? Is it a cat? Is it a critter? And go online and see if any of them are maybe calling out to you. Also, know what you can understand your restrictions and what you can care for and accommodate. A lot of times people want a pet, but they're not in a position to properly care for a pet. A pet is very, there, there come, comes a lot of responsibility with o- being a pet owner. And we really try to emphasize the fact that we all love animals, but are you in a place to properly care for them? and they require food, they require veterinarian care, they require companionship, love and affection. And if you're not able to provide all of that, then it might not be the greatest time for you to maybe adopt, but that doesn't mean you can't come out and volunteer. Um, But to talk a little bit about our adoption process, once you find, once you're in a place that you are prepared to take an animal into your home, we recommend coming to the shelter and filling out an adoption application. And basically, we're just going to get your contact information, some information about where you live, and then um, pair you with an animal. You're welcome to come through our feature room with our cats. You're welcome to go through the um, adoption floor in in the dog adoption area and meet one-on-one with a dog or a cat or even a critter. Sit with them, pet with them, pet them, love on them, see how they interact with you, maybe your children if you have any, or grandchildren for that matter. And um, if everything works accordingly and you're happy, you just complete the application and we send you on your way. It's very simple. We try to keep things as simple and painless as possible. We do ask, though, if you have a dog currently in your house, you do a meet and greet. And that's really just to make sure that their um, the dogs get along and you know they accept one another there's always that transition period no animal is going to come into your home and acclimate day of we ask that you give the animal anywhere from 48 to 72 hours to kind of come out of their shell but um, the meet and greet helps to kind of get over some of those immediate hurdles right off the bat Thank you. And again, who did they call? What, what's the number? You would want to call the front desk and the number for the Humane Society of the Treasure Coast is 772-223-8822. Where are the hours of operation there? We are open from 10 to 5 every day, except for Sunday, we close at 4. And with the upcoming holidays, we will be closed on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and New Year's Eve. However, we will also close at 2 p.m., on um, New Year's Eve. Courtney, New Year's Day we're closed. I'm sorry, <laughs> not New Year's Eve. We close at 2 p.m. on New Year's Eve. <laughs> well, Courtney, um, also tell us um, about stray dogs. If there's a stray dog, do they call you? Who calls you? My recommendation um, is if you see a stray dog, if the dog is scared, typically dogs react, and, and, and a lot of bite cases happen when an animal feels threatened endangered or fearful 
So my recommendation would be, unless the dog is wagging his tail and excited to greet you, try your best to stay away from that dog. Your best bet would be to call animal control through the Martin County Sheriff's Office and let them know exactly where the dog was seen last, what condition the dog is in, its color, you know, what type of breed you think it might be, and they will respond accordingly. Do not try to intervene. Do not try to capture the animal and bring it to our facility. The last thing we want is for someone to maybe be injured because they thought they were doing the right thing. But animal control will be able to capture the animal humanely and bring it to our facility where it will then again be screened. uh, We will look for a microchip. We will try to contact an owner. We will scan through the lost and found pages on social media. And if no one comes to claim that animal within five days, it will then hit the adoption floor. Okay, great. Well, we've got about a minute before I go to news. Uh, I find this very interesting, Diane. This is a great program. Um, and my, my son lives in uh, not too far from where you're located. We also talk to Jack Martinelli every week. Do you deal with him occasionally? I'm familiar. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> Treasure Coast Wildlife yes. Hospital and yes. Center, yeah. Of course, his animals are obviously injured. Yes. Now, do, you, do you occasionally get in injured animals as well? We do. We do get injured animals frequently. And a lot of times when they're animals that are more wildlife animals, <coughs> such as birds or exotic animals, we actually bring them to some of our rescues, which we can touch upon after the break, for their care and expertise in those fields. Excellent. Very good. Okay. Well, it's about 1029 right now. We are listening to Senior Talk brought to you each week by Harbor Place. They're located at 3700 Southeast Jennings Road. We've been a partner with them for a long, long time and certainly one to check out if you're looking at uh, senior retirement. Checking your weather right now, we're at about 20% chance of rain today. I guess we, some say we could use that rain. Areas of fog before, well, be, should be gone by now, otherwise partly sunny today. A high near around 84, light to variable winds becoming south, 5 to 10 this morning. The rest of the week's gonna be kind of warm for this time of the year. Right now, between 10 and 15 degrees above normal, which is, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's hot. That's hot. Uh, okay, folks, for time now, this is WPSL, Port St. Lucie, Florida. It's time for the news. And now we're returning to Senior Talk. And this morning, we have special guests with us from uh, the Director of uh, Human, the Humane Society, the Treasure Coast. That would be... Courtney Zanetti, and uh, we're also joined, of course, every week by Diane McDonald, the sales director down there at Harvard Place. Diane, good morning, and uh, introduce our guest once again, please. Good morning, and thank you for coming back to the show. We still have more to share with you. But yes, Courtney Zanetti, the director of community outreach, is here with us from the Humane Society of the Treasure Coast. A little later in the show, we're going to be speaking to Alana Larson, a manager of volunteer program. Uh, telling you how to you, you can volunteer and donate to the Humane Society. Courtney, before we went into a, a break here, we talked about rescue groups and how the Humane Society of the Treasure Coast utilizes those rescue groups. So yes, Diana, a lot of times what happens uh, with animals that come through our doors, we see that they'd be better suited in a more serene atmosphere. Yes, they're ready for adoption, but our facility might not be something that would be the most appropriate space for them. So we contact some of our partners at our rescue organizations that we partner with. And we let them know the, the animal, the condition that it's in, maybe special special restrictions, whether it with diet or medical care, that it needs to be spe- specially accommodated. Um, and they take it, that into consideration. And if they have room for that animal, they go ahead and take it in and provide it another pl- atmosphere for adoption, um, one that might be better suited for that animal rather than in our facility, only because of the size of our facility and the stressors that come with being a part of a shelter environment. So our rescues play a crucial role in helping us get animals adopted out and they're essential in helping us, allowing us to expand our doors um, into the community for animals that would be better suited in a different environment. I know that you were talking about how many are on the staff, but you also have veterinarians that are on the staff as well. Can you tell us a few of those names of those veterinarians and 
all the good deeds sure. they do for others. So we have two contracted veterinarians that help us out with our spay and neuter surgeries, our medical care, um, and clinical services. Dr. Kea Apolato has been with us for years, and she's in, in on a regular basis, as well as Dr. Roderick Wood. And um, occasionally we'll have other veterinarians from the community partner with us for whether it, it um, additional spay neuter surgeries or perhaps even a microchip clinic like we had at the Pooch Plunge a week ago. And Dr. Heather Rogers with Harmony Animal Hospital in Jupiter is one of those veterinarians that helps us out occasionally with our microchip services. So we're very fortunate to have such skilled uh, veterinarians with us willing to help us out and offer their services to help our animals. Great. Uh, Lana Larson, Manager of Volunteer Program. Lana, tell us about how how can we become volunteers? Sure, absolutely. Um, we run off of our volunteers. When people say, we can't do it without you, that's really what we mean when it comes to our volunteers. They actually put in um, 50 percent of all the time that goes into the shelter so half of those 50 um, 50 employees that work put in half the time and then all of our volunteers that come through do the other half of those hours that help care for our animals to get started you do have to be 12 or older um, but if you are 12 to 15 you can volunteer with a family member who's over 18 we have tons of parent, child, and grandparent, grandchild pairs that come in and volunteer with us, which is wonderful. It's kind of two for the price of one on our end. It's great bonding for the volunteers to come in. Um, what you can do is you actually attend an orientation. And once you attend orientation, you fill out an application there. And at that, we talk a little bit about the background of the Humane Society, some of the services that we offer. And then you get to decide which area is the best for you to volunteer in. At that point, we get your information and our department heads will actually contact you in regarding how to get trained in your specific area and when to get started. So then you would volunteer consistently. We always ask for a four month minimum commitment of one shift per week. You can always volunteer more than that. We would love to have you as much as possible. Animals can never get loved too much, can never get walked too much. Um, that's a little bit on getting started. As far as different areas that you can volunteer in, we're really fortunate to have quite a selection. You can walk dogs, you can care for cats at both our Palm City Shelter and at our thrift stores. You can care for our critters, so those bunnies, guinea pigs, hamsters, ferrets. We have our thrift retail departments front desk and administrative work, our public spay neuter program, mobile adoptions, um, and just a lot of other areas that you can move into as well once you've gotten some additional experience volunteering with us. Great, and then you have a foster volunteer. I know that Courtney spoke about it, but can you tell us more about that as well? Sure, with our foster program, it is a little bit different. That is actually run by someone named Emily Recco, who is wonderful. And our foster program is where you actually take animals into your home to care for them. Now, there could be a variety of reasons that an animal goes into foster care as opposed to the regular shelter environment. It could be that they are recovering from a surgery, that they are receiving heartworm treatment. It might be a mother, dog, cat, or critter that is waiting to give birth and they need a quiet, calm environment for that puppies or kittens that are need to get taken care of because they came in without a parent and a whole slew of other reasons that you can think an animal might require some hands-on experience. Now ours are calculated a little bit differently for the foster care program which is also interesting. Um, instead of it being consecutive hours like it would be for regular volunteering where three hours of work is three hours of work, um, it's a little bit different depending on your case. So if you were bottle feeding a kitten that might require nightly feedings, waking up often during the night, you would get a different amount of calculated hours as opposed to a dog who simply has something like shelter anxiety and they just need a calm place to live but basically don't require a whole lot of care. 
but it's a very rewarding way for people to give back, have a pet for a little while if they're out of town a lot, or if they can't commit to a weekly schedule to come into the shelter, it's a great way to still be involved and help out the animals in our care. Great. Lana, I, it's my understanding the Humane Society of the Treasure Coast is a 501c3 private nonprofit organization. Tell us how we can donate. Sure. There are a few options. You can donate if you're looking at a monetary donation, either online through our website, or you can mail a check to us. You can drop in items or money at the shelter or either thrift store. And then as far as supplies to donate, because that's honestly just as big of a help, if you have wet food, towels, um, toys, enrichment items for animals, anything you can think of that goes into the care of an animal, you can drop it off at either the shelter in Palm City or at either of the thrift stores that are both located in Stewart. And for your thrift stores, what, what can if I go there, what can I purchase? What's there? At a thrift store, you can get everything from gently used jeans to gently used cats. I like the um, word gently, but go ahead. <laughs> so, but it's typically like a normal thrift store that you would see. We have household goods, clothing, um, current electronics. We have everything that you can think of, we have. So we also do have adoption centers, like I said, in both of our in both of our stores. So we do have cats that are up for adoption out of those locations as well. So if you don't want to drive all the way to Palm City and you live closer to one of our thrift stores, then you can go there instead. Our locations for those is we have our central thrift store, which is located at 2585 Southeast Federal Highway in Stewart. And you can call them at 286-6909. Or our North Thrift Store, which is just on the north side of the Roosevelt Bridge, at 1099 Northwest 21st Street in Stewart. And you can call them at 232-4887. And both of their hours are 10 to 5 daily. Thank you, Lana. Courtney, can you tell us about your upcoming events again? And if we wanted to attend, who do we call? Well, we actually have one of our premier signature event, the Paws and Claws Gala, coming up in February. Um, it will be February 11th at Willoughby Golf Club, and this year's theme is Paws to Celebrate, simply because we have so much to be grateful for. We are so proud and honored and grateful for our donors, our sponsors, our board of directors, our staff, employees volunteers and the community at large and that's what this year's gala is designed around tickets are 275 dollars per person the event includes a live auction silent auction dinner dancing um, open bar and it's just a really wonderful event people can um, reserve a table for eight or ten or they can come alone or with a friend it's a pure fundraiser for the Humane Society of the Treasure Coast, and we hope to raise about $200,000 at this year's gala. Okay. Um, you told me that you adopted a Great Dane. Tell us about your Great Dane. Well, Lady Girl <laughs> seems to get a lot of attention these days. <laughs> she, um, I actually adopted her two years ago on New Year's Eve. I, um, she was surrendered on, on the day after Christmas in 20. 14 and at the time she was nine years old and being raised with Great Danes I know that their lifespan is typically right around that time and my heart hurt for her because being a senior she didn't understand why she was being surrendered all she knew she was in a foreign environment one that was somewhat loud and, and scary to a dog that had been in a serene home environment for nine years so I sent a photo to my husband, and he said, bring her home, and I did exactly that. And she's, she's 11 years young for a Great Dane, wow. which is, I guess you can compare that to about a 77-year-old woman um, with very brittle bones because she is a larger breed dog, and her hips hurt, and she's on a lot of supplements like we would be at that age, and pain pills just to help her get through her day-to-day -day activities, but she is really still a puppy at heart. And she loves to cuddle with her toys. And 
uh, sleep next to me at night, and she's certainly not afraid to show her personality at even get any given point. And just like a child, she's afraid of thunderstorms, and I have to cover her with a blanket and protect her from the big bad boom outside. But she's seriously, uh, she's she's brought so much joy and love to our lives, and and that's my personal connection with this organization. I'm incredibly proud of what we do because I see that. We are exactly what we claim to be. We are an open access shelter. We will never turn away any animal, regardless of its age um, or breed, for that matter. Um, here it is, a nine-year-old Great Dane. Most people would say, oh, she's not suitable for adoption. What are, what are you doing bringing her into this, organiz- this shelter? We can't care for her. She's super senior, as they would say, and uh, that wasn't the case. The Humane Society opened their doors. They immediately put her through the vetting and screening process, and she was getting prepared for adoption. It just so happened that I came across her before anybody else. So um, there is no length of stay at the Humane Society of the Treasure Coast. An animal, as long as it's healthy and, and, and adoptable, can live its entire life. Granted, it doesn't usually happen. In fact, it hasn't ever happened that I'm aware of. But we would never say, okay, you've been here too long away with you. You could the animal could stay its entire life with us. I think the longest though an animal has stayed has been about a year, and then typically someone sees that and that and that is a platform for adoption. Oh my gosh, this animal has been here a year. I've got to bring it home, and it works. <laughs> so, um, but let me tell you, the animals don't need or want for anything other than a forever home. I, I jokingly say these dogs have it better off than my own lady girl, and trust me, she's spoiled rotten. But um, they get walked hourly. They get fed all day. They have toys and blankets. They By 5 o'clock, I tell you this, at 445, right before lights are out, you can hear a pin drop in the adoption floor. And that it, it's it's more it's quieter than a, a preschool classroom would be at reset, <laughs> at, like at, at nap time. So it's really an incredible experience. And... It, and having a personal connection to this organization makes it all worthwhile. Courtney, I always say part of living is giving. You definitely gave back <laughs> to your great Dane lady. Or did she give to me? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Very good. Um, Lana, you have two dogs. I do. I actually um, have one pit bull mix. The other half is up for debate. We'll see. Um, <laughs> and then the other little guy, I'm not sure what he is, but he looks like a tiny lab, and they're just partners in crime, and are, I love having him around. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for the world, even if I do have to sweep a lot. <laughs> Paul, it's my understanding you have a cat that you so love. Oh. Yes. Well, you know, we've been married for a long time, and, and we've had two children. Both now are gone have their own animals. <laughs> my daughter lives in Germany. She has a German short hair. Oh, that hunts. My, pointer, my yeah. son-in-law is a big hunter. But she hunts with him a lot, and they love the dog. Uh, and then my, my son, who lives in Palm City, uh, adopted a dog from Cocoa Beach because he'd heard there was this special dog that was available. He drove up there early in the morning, oh. and he got there, and he paid for it and brought it home. And, and Dixie's been just a wonderful dog, just the cutest dog in the world. And we've got a cat. We've had several cats over the years, <laughs> and uh, they're my wife's cat, let's face it. I mean, cats, <laughs> you know, we, I've, we've had dogs. Uh, we've been married 50 years, and we have had, I can't tell you how many animals, and all of them lived a pretty full life for the most part. Uh, dogs, I always thought to be much more pleasant, to me personally. <laughs> I'm sure cats are pleasant in their own way. <laughs> but if you if you call a dog, it comes right to your side. It licks and laps, and a cat says, are you kidding me? I'll come when I want to come. <laughs> We have a caller on line one. Let's see what uh, Pat has to say. What you put your headsets on, Diane? Uh, just one second here. We'll get, uh, so do I just push this down here? We're good to go? Okay, wheel. Okay, you're on the air. Can you hear me, caller? Yes, I can. Okay, Diane, can you hear the caller? Yes, I can. Thank you. Okay. Pat, okay. uh, tell us what's going on. Okay, I'm just wondering if there's any place through the Humane Society or whatever that uh, for low-cost uh, low care, you know, for people on fixed incomes that want to take care of their pets, but it's a costly situation. Did you hear the whole, the que- did you hear the whole question? I, I got the tail end there, my friend. Were you asking that what you should do in the event you have a pet and financially you don't necessarily have the means to care for it any longer? The- 
Well, not no, no, I'm not getting rid of them. I'm just thinking about people, myself and other people out there that care for a pet is pretty expensive. Just vet bills. Yes. And if there was any uh, any program with the Humane Society where they can help out. Unfortunately, at the Humane Society of the Treasure Coast, our veterinarians do not practice medicine on the public's pets. And I can understand the position you're put in, especially when uh, vet bills are mounting. Animals are very costly um, uh, to care for. We try our best to help people keep the pet in their home, and we'll do what we can uh, necessary to help Um, accommodate situations on a case-by-case basis but for the most part um, we cannot practice medicine on the public's pets. Um, What I would recommend to you um, in a a situation where if you needed veterinarian care or medicine is to research some local outlets. One that comes to mind right off the top is PAWS. I want to say it's PAWS to help I might be mistaken in the name, but there is a facility um, in Palm Beach Gardens, and there's an, another one opening up in Stewart, and they offer low-cost vaccinations and medical care for domestic pets. Um, if you're looking for other services, we have a slew of veterinarians that we work with that we can maybe refer you to, and you can work out arrangements with them on a case-by-case basis, but for the most part, we cannot provide care for the public's pets. Okay. Thanks for the call, Pat. Okay. Very good. Nice, good answer to that question. Diane, go ahead. Great. Pause to love, Courtney. It's my understanding that you have a team that comes into communities such as ours, Harbor Place, with assisted living and independent living, nursing homes and hospitals. And I think it's a fantastic idea. I know that pets make great companions. Harbor Place allows pets, as long as the resident can care for them or has someone to care for them while they're with us. Yes, agreed. Um, our pets are our best companions and, and, and on most days and, and most given situations. Um, with the Humane Society of the Treasure Coast, we do have an entire humane education department dedicated to bridging, uh, uniting people on their pets. Um, and with that we have therapy pets and our therapy pets do make their rounds throughout the schools and assisted living facilities throughout Martin and even St. Lucie County. Um, As a matter of fact you touched upon pause to read and we do have a partner we have a partnership with the hospital and Martin Health and I should say Martin Memorial and basically we we bring therapy pets into the hospital to offer companionship love and affection to people that are just down on their luck whether that be cancer or you know maybe they're recovering from surgery or maybe they're being held for observation or undergoing treatment that requires an extensive stay the pets can actually go into the hospital and meet with the patients one-on-one and bring a little joy and light to their day, a little laughter and, and hope for a better tomorrow. And that's what we're all about. Are those animals specially trained? Yes. So with our therapy department, you actually, therapy program, you actually have to have your pet certified. And that, that there's different stages of that. And um, it starts with basic obedience, the basic command, sit, stay, go. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> but um, once your animal passes basic obedience, which are classes we offer, we can progress through the certification process. Now, the animals are not actually certified by the Humane Society of the Treasure Coast. They're certified from an out, outside organization, association, that um, indicates whether or not the animal is eligible to be a, a therapy pet. It's a wonderful service, it sounds like, really. We've often heard that petting a cat or petting a dog actually lowers your blood pressure. I'm not sure it's true or not. But it makes sense to me because you can't pet an animal and still be mad. I can vouch for (laughs) that firsthand. (laughs) You can ask Lana, and I'm sure she can attest to it. There are days I want to rip my hair out. You know, working for a nonprofit, you know, you have a lot of goals to meet, and you're definitely restricted in your expenses. And so there's times where I'm like, how do I get, how do I put a square peg in a round hole? You know, it's sometimes 
difficult. And when I get to that point, I say, I'm taking a break and I'm going to play with a puppy or a kitty. <laughs> and within seconds, sure. I'm totally balanced. Yeah. And it's incredibly rewarding and cathartic to have that ability right at my disposal. <laughs> well, tell us a success story. You know, I might actually toss this to Lana. I mean, in my in my experience, every day is a success story. Every day that I see a family come in and walk out with a pet and they're smiling, that's a success story. Um, I don't know if she can vouch for anything that, in particular that comes to mind, maybe um, one of our recent adoption cases or maybe a foster case that turned into a success story at the end, but she has a lot of hands-on experience too with the pets, so I'll, I'll toss to her. Sure, I'd be happy to. There's some of the pets' names are escaping me specifically, but just a quick one that I thought was really incredible is we have one volunteer who is our critter queen. She takes in all of our critter fosters, comes in and volunteers, grooms animals. And so she took in a pregnant guinea pig. It turned out it was pregnant with quite a few more babies than they thought. I think it was something like nine babies. And she managed to not only get this mom nurse back to health and ready to go, the babies were great, and she managed to get them all adopted. And so that had kind of spurred from a pet store case of they thought they had two of the same gender in a cage, and it wasn't, and they wound up with a whole lot of babies. And so Tracy made the best of it and got all these babies adopted. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you, Courtney and Lana, and also the Humane Society of the Treasure Coast. I hope everyone that's listening wants to give back. Please give them a call and find out what you can do to assist. Paul, thank you for having us on the show, and uh, Merry Christmas. And again, happy holidays to all our listeners. If you want to tour Harbor Place, which is an assisted and independent living community, a continuum of care with our sister community, life care with skilled nursing, and also rehab, please call 772 772- Three three seven four three three zero. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Courtney, in about 30 seconds, give us the information again your website, phone numbers. Sure. Uh, the Humane Society of the Treasure Coast is located in Palm City. Our address is 4100 Southwest Layton Farm Avenue, Palm City, Florida, 34990. We're located right off Martin Highway. And we, our phone number at the front desk is 772-223-8822. And please visit us online at www.hstc1.org. Excellent. Thank you very much, Courtney. That was super. Anyway, folks, you've been listening to Senior Talk. That's on WPSL, the talk of the Treasure Coast. We'll be going to news in about 15 seconds, and then you'll be going down to uh, Christmas Kids with Greg will be down there, and I think maybe Mr. G possibly this morning or not. This is WPSL, Port St. Lucie, Florida. It's time for the news now.